Most micrographic surgery is a highly specialized form of skin cancer surgery. And it was actually invented in the 1930s by Dr. Frederick Mose, who wanted to improve two things. Number one is the accuracy of whereabouts skin cancer might be growing on a patient's tissue. Uh, and number two is the overall cure rate for skin cancer removal. And what it relies on is the principle of contiguous tissue growth, and that is that some cancers, such as basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma, will start at an origin point and they'll grow outwards from there. Now in traditional surgery, what we would do is we'd identify this skin cancer and then we'd add what's called a margin on the outside, an area of healthy tissue that statistically that skin cancer might have grown into within a period of time. By removing that tissue, getting it analysed at a laboratory uh, and looking at about 2% of that sample, they can say, look, with 95% degree accuracy, your skin cancer has been removed. And that works really well for traditional areas such as arms and legs and backs and chest, but has a couple of drawbacks. Number one is that we're only analysing 2% of the outside margin. Um, and that can mean that a skin cancer may not be detected in those bits that are not analysed. Uh, and number two is that you're taking that extra bit of tissue that maybe you don't need to take for that particular scenario. So in Mohs micrographic surgery, what we do is we cut just on the outside of that skin cancer that we can see, and we take it to our on-site laboratory, and that tissue is analysed by the surgeon, the Mohs surgeon, and we can look at 99% of that cut edge, and we can determine with a high degree of accuracy that the tumour is confined just within this area. And that has two advantages. Number one is that the cure rate can be up to 99% for primary tumours. And number two is that we can minimise the tissue loss by up to that 50% that needs to be added. And that results in us being able to uh, take that flap or that graft in situations and make just a straight line, improving both the cosmetic outcome for the patient, but with that cure rate being extremely high, it also improves the longer term outcome for that patient. The process of Mohs micrographic surgery begins by marking out the tumour on the patient's skin. We use our clinical skills as dermatologists and aids such as demoscopy and magnification to the best of our ability to identify where the skin cancer is beginning and where it may have grown to. We then create an illustration of this so that we can have a representative map so that when we're in the laboratory we can make sure that we're remaining orientated in the patient's tissue so that we can be accurate that we've removed the skin cancer or if it's still present exactly where that is. We then need to anaesthetise the tissue and in most surgery traditionally we use local anaesthetic, uh, a mixture between local anaesthetic that's quick acting and local anaesthetic that is long acting, okay. meaning that the patient will become numb very quickly and they'll remain numb for the entirety of the procedure so that we can maintain as much comfort as possible. We then need to remove that tissue and we generally prepare the area in a sterile field in a large theatre setting so to make sure that the infection rate is as low as possible. Once we remove the tissue that we've drawn out, we then need to achieve hemostasis, which is where we cauterise small blood vessels to make sure there's no bleeding. Once we've done this, we can put a temporary dressing over the top and the patient can then leave the theatre into a special waiting area where they can have some refreshments uh, and they can eat uh, small bites to eat if they like. Once we've removed the tissue, we then transport it into our laboratory. And in the laboratory, the Mohs surgeon is both the person who has removed the tissue, but also the person who'll be analysing the tissue. We transect the tissue into what we call quadrants, and this allows us to break up that larger piece into smaller areas to make sure that we have a small degree of orientation and a higher degree of accuracy about where that skin cancer is going to be growing. We need to mark out the tissue with special dyes so that under the microscope we can also see this. And then that tissue is given to our technician. In Mohs surgery, we need to take that 3D shape and view it in a 2D plane. So we need to manipulate the tissue in a certain way so that we can view the outside, the middle and the underneath in a contiguous view with the other side and the other side of the outside skin so that we can view virtually 99% of that cut edge. 
The technician then creates very, very thin slices of tissue uh, through a special uh, cryostat and dermatome machine, and then that is put through a series of stains. And this is where the bulk of the waiting for results will come, because each slide that's prepared, each degree of accuracy that we're after requires an entire run of this process. Waiting times can vary for patients between 20 minutes for smaller sections and up to an hour for larger sections before we will have those results. Once we've determined whether the cancer remains or whether there's more to take, the patient can either proceed to a repair stage or a second stage of Mohs surgery. If they have to go to a second stage of Mohs surgery, we would then go back to that tissue and draw out where we would need to take uh, more uh, healthy tissue on the outside and that skin cancer within it. And what we want to do is overlap it. We've got to make sure we go underneath that layer of skin we've previously taken and just on the edges of it to make sure that we have a high degree of skin cancer removal and a high cure rate for that patient. We then repeat the analysis stage and the patient would go back into the waiting area. 70% of patients require a single stage of Mohs micrographic surgery, about 20% require 2%, and less than 10% require three stages or more. Once we know the skin cancer is all gone, we can go to the repair phase. And this is where we would determine the best cosmetic outcome for the patient, but also the best functional outcome for their tissue. When we repair tissue, generally speaking, we're going to be using a combination of inside stitches and outside stitches. And those outside stitches will remain in the skin for three to five days, depending on what we're doing. Uh, and the patient will be given both verbal instructions about how to take care of their wound and also written instructions. And our officers will be in contact uh, with the patients over the next couple of days to make sure they're healing well. And we'll be seeing them back to get those stitch, uh, stitches out for them. In Mohs surgery, we've got a number of advantages. Uh, the number one advantage is that the high rate of skin cancer removal can be up to 99% for primary tumours. And the second advantage is that we can minimise the amount of tissue loss by up to 50%. And this means that we can improve the long-term outcome for patients with that higher cure rate and also potentially improve the cosmetic outcome because we're minimizing the amount of tissue that needs to be lost and therefore can minimize the amount of repair that needs to be done to give them that natural uh, and best healing outcome. Beautiful. Well done, mate. Looks really good.